Welcome to the channel and welcome to my fish room. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the multiple weekly updates. Unfortunately, in today's video, I do have to deliver some unfortunate news, but stay tuned throughout the video for some quick prevention and treatment options to help you with this contagious fish disease that's just as, as common as the cold. This is probably one of the most common diseases that you will run across in the aquarium hobby. It is definitely the biggest problem and issue I run into. And all it is, is a opportunistic protozoan parasite that is highly contagious to your fish population. This problematic issue is referred to as it. And just like the name refers, when you identify this problem, you will definitely be saying ick. Unfortunately, my albino bursinose pleco did recently die of ick. I noticed it two days ago and did begin treatment, but unfortunately it didn't make it. I did pick up this albino bristlenose pleco from a pet store that when I go there, they do have a small problem with dead fish in their aquariums. This is the same place that I got the two wild guppies from when I picked up the ghost shrimp. They were in the bag when I got home. So I chose to all keep them together in this 10 gallon aquarium. So I'm wondering if the female passed away from the same ick issue because you don't always see the white spots immediately. They're usually infected prior to seeing this, these spots. I did give this Pleco a very good look over before I decided to purchase it and I did not see any indication of ick at the store. When trying to identify if your fish has ick, just know that it is highly contagious and just because that particular fish isn't showing signs of the telltale white spots, does that does not mean that it is not infected. Identifying ick once the white spots has formed is not difficult. But what these little white spots are are actually little cysts. And this is the site where the protozoan parasite is feeding and just slowly sucking the life out of the fish. These spots can be found all over the fish's body, but mainly I find them on the fins, gills, and sometimes in the eyes. Freshwater captive fish usually develop ick because of a compromised immune system due to stress. There can be many factors when inducing stress in fish. It can be temperature, water quality, other tank inhibitants, kind of nipping and chasing. It can also be attributed to poor diet. But really my main issue when dealing with ick is shipping and handling new fish into my aquariums. It's always a good idea to kind of quarantine them away into their own tank. And again, all of these fish in this tank came from that particular pet store. Remember, all freshwater fish have the same probability of catching ick if exposed, whether hardy or delicate, they all have the same chances. Along with these white spots, if you notice your fish acting lethargic, losing its appetite, and really kind of scratching and rubbing up against anything in your aquarium, you are going to want to take action. There are some relatively easy treatments for this because you will come across this issue frequently in the fish hobby. With a deeper understanding of this ailment, you will be able to optimize your treatment plan. Diving deeper into the life cycle of this parasite will help you understand the treatment plans, but keeping it simple, just know that while attached to the fish's body, this parasite does mature and grow. It will eventually burst through that cyst and attached to anything in your aquarium, 
once it's attached, it will start to multiply and then just look for another host to infect. If left unchecked, this life cycle will continue to grow and take over all of your fish in your tank because again, this is highly contagious just like the cold is in humans. Know that the life cycle of this parasite is very heat dependent. That is one of the reasons why they do tell you to increase the temperature heat in your aquariums. However, when that parasite is in that cyst, you won't be able to kill it. You will have to wait till it bursts through that capsule and is kind of microscopic in your tank doing water changes and increasing your heat to at least 80, 82 will help kill this parasite. There are numerous different medications on the market for you to choose from when choosing how to treat and cure your ick problem. Just make sure it's very important you follow the directions on the box or the bottle. When dosing this medication, if you use hang on the back filters like I do, make sure you remove the cartridge before dosing. Don't be alarmed when using these products. Your water will turn blue and it can stain. So be careful and make sure you do daily water changes. There is one more treatment that I personally have not used, but you can use salt to help kill this parasite. Just be careful, add this slowly, and I believe it's one teaspoon per gallon. The biggest thing you can do when trying to prevent an ick outbreak is doing a proper examination before adding your fish to any of your tanks, quarantining if possible, and trying to avoid stress at all costs. This is highly contagious and you will get this from time to time in your tank. So do the proper treatments, keep going, and try again. Remember, just don't get defeated. I have lost many fish through the years with dealing with ick. Just implement the best treatment plan that you can. Remember, wash your hands after cleaning the tanks and doing water changes and don't cross-contaminate your aquarium tools. If you've had any problems with ick in your aquariums in the past, feel free to leave it in the comments below to help share knowledge and information. But until tomorrow, like, share this video, comment down below, and don't miss the description box below. And most importantly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to make sure you stay updated on all guppy love. Thank you for watching and enjoy.